<clears throat> All right, hey guys, we're live. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I, impromptu, I wanted to do a quick video with some feedback on uh, Tracy Simpson's uh, online pricing guide. Uh, so if you are just tuning in live, uh, click the link in the description and that'll give, if you give Ecamm Live permission, I can sh see your comments. Um, let me open that back up. Comments and reactions. There we go. So give me a thumbs up that you can hear and see me okay. Uh, any audio or tech issues, let me know. Um, I'm really excited about this. I've seen a lot of you guys making some really good strides and putting in a lot of hard work building out your online pricing guides. And Tracy, you've got a really awesome one going. And thank you so much for volunteering to let me kind of go through and give a good uh, feedback session. And I went in through, I went into your account and actually made a copy of it. And I'm gonna walk you guys step by step through the changes I made to her online pricing guide uh, and, and explain why I made these changes so that when you're building your first one, this can be an awesome inspiration. Or if you're going back and retweaking yours, this will give you some good guidance and good inspiration as well. So let me give you a quick structure of how I want to run this kind of live coaching session. So one of the things I've seen, some, come, some trends, uh, we've got a new baby step pricing blueprint course that's live in the academy. It's the updated kind of Loom video course, but it's a lot better, uh, a lot more steps and a lot more detail and ex exactly how you can build out this process in your um, in your own business. Um, but what I'm seeing happen, and I wanna really remind people of, of a handful of small mistakes that really make all the difference. So number one is using the online pricing guide, it's not meant to replace whatever existing detailed pricing guide or PDF or whatever you might have. The big thing that where what I want to replace is emailing too much stuff or emailing a PDF, emailing something that's meant and intended to be printed and looked at in person with you, leave that to continue to use it in person. But um, I think it'll help you build your first uh, pricing guide. I think one of the biggest hangups people have is they go to open up our pricing guide template and they go, oh, there's not enough room for all of the things that I wanna put in here. That's the point. I, it's a very simplified, um, online guide that's meant to do a very specific job. So I'm gonna walk you through why. So baby steps is huge. And then I'm gonna walk you through some copywriting. I've got some really good copy here that you guys could use as well. Um, you really wanna make sure that your copy focuses on your specific client's mindset, where they're at in, not only in their life, but in the process of choosing a photographer, right? You're gonna to talk to somebody who's just visiting your website, who's gotten to know you for like five minutes. You're gonna to talk to them differently based that than you would like on the very on the sales session like two months later, right? So you wanna be focusing on where they're at, the problems they have, and how you help them solve their problems. And one of the biggest kind of overarching problems you're gonna help people solve with this online pricing guide is the process of choosing a photographer, of understanding what's available and understanding how do I choose a photographer that's right for me and understanding kind of what do I wanna do with all of these images, so many different choices, right? So focus on them with your copy. I'll show you some, some good examples of that. And then um, in each step of your process, you wanna make sure you're only focusing on the next smallest smallest next step, right? Um, so one of the mistakes I also see people see is jumping directly to the booking, trying to get the booking on their website, trying to get the booking immediately on the online pricing guide. That's not where we should be asking for that. It, the, the booking is the biggest, scariest thing, right? You wanna fill in as many tiny, easy to say yes to things um, before you get there. So. Um, the big decision of, of have a new booking, or sorry, a new visitor on your website turning into a booking. This is huge, guys. We gotta break that big step into a bunch of tiny steps. So this is your website. 
we get a visitor, the goal on your website is to get them just to subscribe to your newsletter or to your uh, sticky email um, uh, like guide so you can start nurturing them. And, ex and you're, p you're, you're saying, hey, do you wanna get my online pricing guide along with these cool tips? So you can send them directly to your pricing if you want, right, right as soon as they submit the form, but you're also sending them these nurturing emails that tell you more about yourself and your process and, um, and about your products and stuff like that, and then further getting them to go look at your pricing. So this is your pricing guide. This is your, your emails. And so we're not asking for booking here or necessarily here. Maybe in the last couple emails you could go direct to booking, but I think the best next step is to say, hey, as a reminder, here's a link to my pricing information here. And then on the pricing guide, we're still not, this is my feedback for you, Tracy, specifically, is I think this is still too much of a jump to get people to pay you money to hold, like a down payment to hold an actual session. I think the best call to action here is to just um, click a link to schedule a 15 minute consult call, whether it's in person or over the phone, that's the smallest next step. And then it's on, when you finally get them on the phone or you finally get them in person, that is when you're taking the down payment for the actual booking, all right? That's, we wanna break this down as small as we possibly can, right? Uh, so in the Baby Step Pricing Blueprint course, I walk you through kind of the baby steps that you get to take to build this process. There's some, this is not necessarily the, the path that your client takes. It's some of it mirrors it, but this is built with the, uh, the idea of, I wanna make sure you know what you should build when in your system. In this course, I, I walk you through the breadcrumb trail or the baby step trail that each that your client takes through this whole process, right? Um, so in like, for example, once inside of your emails here, um, oh, if I can still type or draw, oh well. I've got all kinds of tech issues today, there we go. So in this step right here, you're linking out to your online um, scheduling link or page or maybe additional portfolios, um, but you wanna link out to those in the client's process. Okay, all right, so let me just jump in to a quick preview of, uh, of Tracy's existing online pricing guide. And some of the, I'll, I'll point out really high level, some of the things I'm gonna talk about, then I'm gonna walk, talk about why, and then we'll come in and I'm gonna show you the exact changes that I made, all right? Give me some thumbs up if you guys are watching, if this is still working. I'm gonna go over, yeah, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a quick double check. I'd hate for this to go, um, this recording to not be working the whole time. I just wanna make sure, oh, of course. You know what, I'm just gonna trust let me check Slack in case Shannon, Shannon will, will tell me if, if I'm, uh, can you verify that my live is going well? Okay. Um, all right. Now I want to walk you through, oh yeah, here we go. So here's high level. Um, so this is a good, just good title. Um, one of the things I want to point out right away is you want to have your sticky email forms on, on almost every page, right? Right here. This is a good example of a slide out. Uh, Tracy, you also have the exit intent on your live pricing guide. So remember, by this stage, I think you already have their email address. This is the only way somebody should be getting your guide. These online guides should not be accessible on your website. The only way they're getting them is if you already have their email address and they're most likely already subscribed to this guide. So let's not ask them again. I, on the one I did for you, I removed that. So that's the first big change, just getting the steps that you want your potential clients to be going through. All right. So then the next thing, oops, um, it here is the session fees. You, went, you go immediately into fees. 
I'm gonna show you how you can make this a little bit more client-centered using their language and their problems. And then you've got four collections with a lot of good stuff in here. I'm gonna walk you through how I think even if you have, I don't know, six, six, seven, eight collections, you should only be showing three at this stage. Remember, most of the people looking at this have only known you for a few minutes. Let's not overwhelm them with too much details. Number one, with too many collections and too many details. I've also moved the whole collection section of the online pricing guide to the bottom. I think it's the last thing they should consider, right? We're gonna show them a bunch of stuff, introduce some high level ideas about uh, products and how you're different and why you're special. And then the last thing we want them to consider is the idea of a collection. All right, so we bump that to the bottom. This, what you're doing awesome here is showing what you're selling. These mock-ups are fantastic, really good descriptions of what you're offering. Um, the only thing I'm changing here is just eliminating some of the detail. These are great details for you to talk about in person or over the phone or maybe later in the process. Um, then there's some small changes they make to the gallery. Um, I think it's great to have a, a cool video like this showing off your studio. Um, I, I'm gonna spend some time talking about this main, what the main call to action sh should be. We don't need to um, offer the guide. We really want the main call to action for this whole project to be getting them to schedule a call with you. Um, if you don't already have an online ca calendar scheduling link, we've been recommending uh, Calendly, it works great. I know that Erin and Elizabeth at Four Girls uh, Glamour, they've had huge success. Like they said to me, you know what, Nate, when we get, can get somebody on the phone, our book rate is so high. I just wanna get somebody on the phone. That is what we want this whole kind of baby step to be about is a, this is all designed to get people on the phone, right? We want, don't want to overwhelm them with too many things to think about. We don't want to give them enough reasons to like get overwhelmed and confused and to feel stupid. Like people won't call you when they're confused. That's the unfortunate thing, right? Because they feel subconsciously people feel dumb and they're not going to call for help when they feel dumb. If they feel intrigued and excited, that's when they call for questions, right? So you want, I know that we're fighting this overwhelming sense that you guys know so much about your business and about the products, and you've had to make really hard decisions about what products you, you offer. Um, but when you get over, when you overwhelm people, they don't reach out. You wanna make sure that you're just giving just enough to make them curious, right? Okay, let's keep chugging along. I give you a little bit of feedback here on how to uh, shorten up your about me at the end. Okay, so let me jump over to my slide deck and I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you guys through a quick preview of some of the key points that I want you guys considering when building your online pricing guides and going through the, the new uh, baby step uh, blueprint uh, course, all right? So the first thing here is to really clarify the goal of automating and having this baby step process. There's a lot of you I know are struggling with getting more traffic and we of course would love to have this automated system that's just giving us word of mouth, getting us clients and, and money in the bank, right? But the, the unfortunate gap we need to close first <clears throat> is we don't wanna help drive more traffic with more Facebook ads or more paid campaigns or whatever you might be running if you're not automating this booking process. So the whole idea of having an online guide and automating it, connecting it to sticky email is to make you 100% ready for traffic. Um, the other big piece here is it closes this emotional leak in our business. It can be so frustrating. I don't know about you guys, but when I was first getting started and I would get a, um, an inquiry, I would literally drop everything for my, like I would, in the middle of dinner, if there was, the only thing I wouldn't, I would not interrupt would, is an actual shoot. Any other time of day, 
I would stay up late, I would email, I would call, I would manually respond to every single inquiry, um, and I would overwhelm them with too much data. And so this combination of like interrupting my family and sacrificing so much to respond right away, to have them oftentimes ghost and not respond to me was this huge kind of kick in the stomach, this huge discouragement, like, oh my gosh, nobody likes my work. What am I doing? I'm overwhelming people. And the, the, I think as creatives, we need to make sure we're protecting our, our, like, our mental health <laughs> and our stamina, protecting ourselves from rejection from so many people who don't understand how hard it is that we work. And they're just, you're always getting those, well, why can't I just get the digitals? Why do your eight by 10 cost so much? When you build this automation into your online pricing guide, it protects you from these moments, right? So a lot of the people who say, oh, this is what they do, I'm not interested, you don't even have to deal with it. It's just kind of automated. And now with the, with the people that are getting through your process, they are, um, they, they kind of get a better idea of what you're about and you're more excited to get those inquiries because they know more about who you are and what you offer. Um, so I'm not gonna go through this whole baby step guide, but just know that this is a, um, kind of a, a baby step process for you on what marketing projects to build with Sticky and other tools to, to really fully automate your inquiry, your, your traffic on your website, all the way to booked client process um, in a really thriving way, all right? It's a really exciting course. You, if you log into your account under Sticky Academy or under Academy, it's the Baby Step Pricing Blueprint course, all right? Okay, as a, another quick reminder, this process does not replace the consult. I th still think you should, I think everybody agrees that you should be talking to each and every one of your clients before you take their money, unless, unless you're doing like uh, mini sessions or super high volume, um, just even a 15 minute phone call before you're taking credit card is typically the best practice, right? I think most of you um, can agree with me there. The other big piece is don't try to shoehorn your existing pricing stuff into one online pricing guide. I still think you should have something printed, whether you're using Design -A Glow or some other awesome kind of branded, well laid out print guide print that and, sh and give it to them as a magazine, as a checklist, as a menu, give that to them in person as something to take home if, if they're not booking right away, or even just to let them start flipping through and thinking about leading up to the session and the sales session, right? Um, I don't want you guys thinking that this is replacing it, it's just adding a better purpose-built, time-sensitive kind of breadcrumb. Um, to the whole process. You still want to be giving those online, or the in-person guides, all right? So the, the main problem we're solving here with, with having it broken down into so many tiny steps is we're oftentimes as experts, we are overwhelming our clients with too much information. And too fast is the key metric here, right? You In one phone call, in one meeting, in one email, in one visit on your website, we're just, we're like so f desperate to get somebody's attention that we just dump on them. And the re your clients can actually understand everything, right? Given enough time, human beings, we can have an amazing ability to understand and retain a lot of information. And we can kind of access it and pull it back up really fast, but we need time to study. Like we need time to understand, to trust you, to learn it, to have it fit into our existing understanding. So don't get discouraged if you feel like your clients aren't valuing you or they don't get what you're saying. You just need to go slower and use smaller baby steps to, so that they can start uh, to understand it, right? The big thing with the online pricing guide project is just to really replace emailing. We need to stop emailing too much stuff in a long email or in an email attachment. People just aren't getting it. It's not gonna work. We need to break what we used to do down into a bunch of tiny steps, okay? So we've got um, your potential clients, they just need to start slow 
um, one of the good tests, I love um, going to like a meetup. One of the cool uh, like icebreakers people use sometimes is how do your children describe what you do? Like think about that next time when, when somebody asks you, what do you do? Think about, well, my kids, what my kids, how my kids describe what I do, right? Um, depending on the age of your kids. I think it's a helpful thing. And I think that practice describing your pricing to your friends, to your family, to your children, so that you are giving them just the, the least amount of information they possibly need that, that, that's intended to entice them, to get them to have another conversation with you, right? Um, so the whole boot, uh, baby step course, it, it's really about replacing the email pricing um, um, and any other overly complicated emails and a, a smaller baby step. It's not replacing the phone call or the in-person consult. It's just automating it so that you can still deliver things instantly 24 seven. You can make an awesome personal first impression and it still communicates the value of what you offer and what you do, right? Okay, so um, I'm gonna dig in here to um, why this is so important. Um, Seth Godin says, what we charge says as much about who we're speaking to as it does about what we think about ourselves. And over the last couple months, I've really dug deep into pricing and how I really want to help you guys be more confident uh, and, and direct and, and effective at talking about your pricing. Because if I see it as this huge emotional leak in our industry, for a lot of people who are embarrassed and nervous and scared to talk about it. And the better we get at talking about pricing, it really opens the door to so much more success. Um, I love it. Uh, so um, thanks Cynthia for chiming in, I love it. So let me know if you guys are tuning in live and have any questions, um, any comments about what I'm saying and if it's resonating or if uh, anything like that, all right? so. Again, addressing the core problem is when people are asking for their, your pricing, they're, they don't know how to say it, but they're just asking, can I trust you, right? They don't need all of the details. You just wanna give them just enough, right? And help them narrow you down as, oh, this is a photographer that's gonna help me make this really difficult decision, and I trust them because they look like experts, right? Um, Tracy, this is an example of uh, the Calendly interface, you, you wanna link out to an online scheduling page like this. At the end of the day, this is the, the tiniest next step that we want your online pricing guide to get them to, is just to get them to schedule a call with you, right? And you can accomplish that both with links on your pricing guide to schedule, but then you can also add these links like this to your pricing guide or to schedule a call inside the emails of your nurturing sticky email sequence. Okay, um, so we've talked about this. It does not replace the console. It's about, imagine um, you want, you're giving your inquiring clients and your visitors on your website, it's almost like you're having them meet with an assistant first, right? They just review the basics. Like they're just gonna go over the high level, just get to, get you curious about what's available and then any questions you have, you're gonna handle in person, right? Um, Tracy, what I love about what you've done is you've, you've, you have a pricing guide for each one of your portrait niches. I saw that in your account. Awesome, huge kudos to you. The problem is, too many photographers are putting um, too many um, too, too many different niches all in one site and all in one pricing guide. And here's, I think the big thing, I'll just summarize this point quickly, is the, this at this stage of the process, it's all about getting an inquiry to trust that you're an expert, right? And you're making your job of showing that you're trustworthy, right? You're making it hard to trust you if you're trying to say you're an expert at everything. If you, I get it, I know it, all of you wanna do multiple genres, that's awesome. But if you, if you aren't yet able to have um, genre specific or niche specific stuff on your website, you at least have to, because you can get m multiple online pricing guides in your Sticky Folio account, 
have it at least niche it down so that your pricing guides are specific to only one niche. This demonstrates that you are in fact a pro. All right, um, so that's having the importance of having a focused target. The other big one is having really simple pro, uh, collections or packages. Less really is more at every stage of the game. I know it's counterintuitive. Everybody thinks we like big, we like to have a choice and you wanna show that you're like can customize everything, um, but you wanna really simplify it. We're, we're, you're losing more bookings to people making no decision. Remember, when people are ghosting on you, it's most likely because they just feel overwhelmed and they're embarrassed to say they don't get it, right? So oversimplify, it, it's ironic, like we're, we're afraid, like, oh, we don't want people to feel like we're not giving them enough information because you know so much and you're an expert on so much. But the, what ends up happening is you give too much information and then they get overwhelmed and they feel silly and then they, they won't ask questions, right, when they're stuck. When you give just a little bit and you entice them, then they ask questions, all right? I, I'm gonna keep making that point. Um, so uh, I, I narrowed down, Tracy, your, your guide to just three, from four, you had four long collections. I just simplified it to three. I think there's room for you to make it even simpler. I call this three plus custom, where have three, and even if you, your whole career have been using and having other collections, at that point after three, that's just for you. That's just for your sanity. To, to like, okay, when you're talking to maybe other people on your team or you're, you're taking notes about what they ordered or what you need to deliver, it can be helpful for you to think, okay, they got pack package six or seven, right? That makes sense to you. You can remember <laughs> what's in eight different packages. Your clients can barely understand the difference of three, right? So use this as a guide to get them close to what you think they want and if they want a little bit more, they want to add this or take away this, then just say, well, that's our, our custom package. They don't need to know that it's maybe one of your old existing ones. You want to have something really big that you're selling just a handful of the times. If you're starting to sell your top package a lot, you will raise the prices. Um, you want to have the very, very, very minimum. I dropped actually, Tracy, your lowest package because I don't think you want people buying that lowest package. Don't show a package unless you're okay with somebody ordering it, right? Um, you want us, people to say, okay, I don't want to get the cheapest one. That, that looks a little too expensive, but the Goldilocks, this one feels just right. You want most people landing, this is, you want this to be slightly over your average goal you're, you're get, getting after. And then as you start to get more and more people to buy the platinum, then you just keep raising all of your prices. All right. Um, they need to go slow. You did a great job of showing what you sell with good mock-ups of people's work. Um, you really, if you, you guys can't get pictures of, of your work in actual people's homes, use different mock-up tools out there. Um, one of the big things I always wanna shout out is um, right now, Tracy, you've got a good uh, kind of slideshow of images of your studio. I think that's great. If you guys have video or any even images of your existing shooting place or the place of you shooting, I think that's a really good thing to have. Another really powerful video to have on your online pricing guide is just a, a montage or a, a video. It doesn't even have to have audio of your clients, past clients reacting, looking at their album for the first time. That's huge. Um, Tracy, what you did another really good job of is focusing on the differences of how your products are different and special from what people can normally get online or other places. Uh, and I just helped you simplify a little bit of that, but you started with the right, right spot. You don't want to get overboard about the details in the technical terms. You can save that to show them in person. Um, people don't need to know why, really. That's like the science between why, why acrylic is so much better. But when they touch it, they're kind of they're just going to understand it, right? Okay. Um, finally, the um, make this point one more time is you don't want to have your pop-ups on your pricing guides because you're. Most of the people, the only way for people to get your pricing guide 
is um, this awesome compound offer that's on your websites. So when somebody is getting to your website, you're able to say, hey, enter your email below so we can send you our free tips about et cetera, whatever niche you've written about, along with our price list. And then you don't need to have the, your, your sticky email forms on your guide, okay? So let me zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see all of my existing copy that I wrote. Um, I'm gonna zoom in with that view. And we're gonna go through kind of before and after. So this was the first bit of copy. You have the hero, which is all right, that was a good title. But then you went immediately into session fees, right? Um, these are all things that you could say um, after, maybe let's say you have um, a phone consult booked. You could send an, a, an email out to them with some of this information. That's what this, this detailed information feels like the right time for. Um, you don't want, you're putting the cart before the horse here with jumping immediately to specific information. Like note, session fees are due at the time of booking as a retainer to hold your session date and therefore non-refundable. Like that's fine print that if you only have like three minutes to talk to somebody for the very first time, you're not gonna talk about something like that. So don't include it in your online pricing guide. P push that downstream where you can talk about it in a, a follow-up email after the consult or leading up to the meeting or something like that. Um, and then there's additional links out here. I don't think you need to link out to other, um, other types of uh, pricing guides. That's just overwhelming. That's just more data. The only way somebody's gonna get this is if you know they are interested in your newborn photography, right? So here's my revised kind of immediate below the fold intro copy. And this is, I wanna spend some time explaining my approach here. So number one, this first sentence. Each sentence in any web page is all about getting people to read the next sentence and the next and the next, right? So I immediately wanna to speak to where we know your clients are. Choosing your newborn photographer simplified, right? It's, just, it's getting straight after the problem that choosing a photographer is confusing. You could, other ideas here would be like, choosing a newborn photographer is too complicated. Boom, you could just say that and then dig into how you think it's simpler. So here's some sample copy that I think you guys could use versions of this in a, in a couple different ways saying, I get it, as you prepare for your new baby, it can feel like there's a never ending list of things to buy, prepare, paint, build, read, etc. which is why I created this guide to help make choosing your newborn photographer as simple as possible. So remember, there's all kinds of these decisions that your client's making. They're not, we don't want to rush them to deciding how much they're gonna, money they're gonna give you. Remember, on here you go immediately to money, right? We don't wanna go immediately to money. That they, I know they asked for it, but we wanna start somewhere else. Um, we wanna start with the problems you help them solve. So, uh, and, and, and the first one is helping them make the choice of a photographer, right? That's the first thing where they, they start going, oh yeah, okay, somebody gets me. They understand my life, my challenges, my problems. Now I'm gonna pay attention to what it is they do and how they can help me. Um, during the first special few weeks, there's a lot happening for you and baby. With my own dedicated studio, I take pride in creating a calm and tranquil space for you and baby to pause and capture this amazing moment. So it's immediately getting to this importance. Again, I'm not yet even convincing them to buy products. It's, that, that sentence is about convincing them to hire a photographer, right? That amidst, we're, we're not really, um, so remember, we're, 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 we're com competing against uh, the overwhelm of no decision, of people going, there's too much. You're, you're not competing with other photographers really yet, guys. You're competing with everything else that's happening in your clients' lives. We are all so busy and just slowing down to figure out you and what you offer and your prices. Sometimes that's too much. 
for them to figure out and therefore they don't and they don't hire any photographer or they just they go to the photographer that just is easiest right whatever's quick I don't even care right give me something that's simple okay now I start to talk about um, because it it looks like you do offer additional products Uh, we want to start easing in to we know there's that kind of there's that existing um, kind of hurdle we can assume that we've got to start explaining the difference of why you do more than just digitals right um, people think that's all they want, but when they slow down for a second, almost everybody realizes that they actually do want more than digitals. So I plant the seed with a good headline. Beyond digital files, I also specialize in helping my clients select the best types of prints and heirloom quality artwork to properly archive, celebrate, share, and cherish your portraits in this moment for generations to come. Take a moment, moment to browse a few of my most popular options below Then, that's a good word to use, like you're giving them a process of how you help people, right? Then I look forward to chatting to learn more about you as well as answer any questions or concerns you may have. So we started with, I get you, I can help you. I help people, most of my clients, I help them with beyond digital files and the point of this guide, um, I love it. Awesome, thanks. Somebody says they love that wording. Um, I, I think it's a really good way to position that you you just go beyond, right? Um, okay, um, take a moment to browse. I think you guys get that one. All right. Um, all right, let's move on to collections. So remember, I um, in the new um, template, when you go to, if anybody goes to create a brand new online pricing guide today, I've rearranged things. I've moved this to the bottom. So that's the one thing I've also changed. Um, but I'm going to talk about this now because this is where it was in your um, existing page, right? So a couple quick things to remind ourselves. We don't want to have this thing distracting us, right? Um, you always want to be testing even though every sticky folio is really nice and, and mobile responsive, um, you want to make sure you're looking at your, your folios on multiple devices because if this gets too long, even though this looks maybe okay on a big screen, it's unreadable and nobody's going to get past it on a phone, right? And you always want to be optimizing for most, knowing that most of your new and first time visitors are probably on a phone or a tablet. Um, you simply don't need to give that much detail. Your first online guide should not have any sizes. This is too early, too much, too soon, right? We understand sizes. We need to sort in our brains like, okay, this package has this, this sizes and this number of them, blah, blah, blah. This is how I make money. I get that's what you need for you to understand it, but your clients really don't understand size. Maybe when you start showing like mock-up tools of like, here's what an eight by 10 looks like over your couch versus what a, like a 26 or a 36 inch looks like on uh, above your fireplace. You can start to illustrate that size is important, but the only way they finally get it is when they can see a sample in person. So don't even bother talking about sizes or specific prices at all. What I love that you've done is just very simple Um, Numbers here, starting at with a package, that's all good. Um, Let's see, what else? Uh, I simplified a couple other things here, so let's take a look at my version. I think you could, um, oh, one more quick note. This is what it looks like even on a laptop screen. You start to get like this toothy look when you have more than three. Another good reason to just narrow it down to three. So here's what I've brought it down to. I think you could probably take it down even farther. let me show you some quick kind of copywriting ideas. So give this like popular collection options or um, collections, simple, simple collection choices, as easy as one, two, three, or something like that. I could even see having, giving these some kind of name. Maybe, I know you do multiple different genres, but give this some kind of cute name based that connects with newborns or something like that. Um, just, so it's, you want every word you use to, to like do double duty. This doesn't like help, like one, two, three. It doesn't like help add any sense of value to it. 
um, but I left it as is for now. Okay, so here's the sentence I use here. Choosing a collection is the easiest way to get a variety of our most popular products with our best prices. Um, so it's almost common. I, I wasn't 100% sure, but I'm assuming that all of you guys offer a discount off of your a la carte options. Um, in, when, when somebody you want people to pick a package, right? So that's that's just this is meant as your last ditch thing. Remember, I've moved collections to the end of the page. They've looked at all your gallery. They've looked at other your products. That we're going to walk about in a second, and then you're saying the simplest thing is to choose a package because you could, they're on the verge of getting overwhelmed, right? They're even if you only show them like three or six different types of your products, they're still going to be going. Oh gosh, this is all of these just more decisions I need to make on top of like what kind of formula I'm going to buy, what kind of um, bassinet I want to buy, what stroller am I going to get, right? They're already overwhelmed with all these decisions. We don't want to go too far. And so that's why having the collection thing at the bottom is like the perfect way to swoop in, like almost overwhelmed. Oh, and by the way, we make it simple. Just pick a package and we can, if, there, if the package doesn't fit exactly what you want, we can create something custom just for you. But this is typically what most of our customers end up investing. Okay, um, I would, uh, some further notes here. Um, I get the language here. Using the word luxury is cool, but I wouldn't maybe call your, your USB luxury. Like you don't want people to focus on that. I would even kind of prod you, um, Tracy, to take digitals off of your, your lowest collection. I think people should be spending at least that much with you before they get any digitals at all. Um, use just giving them more and more reason to get up to your top packages. Take out your custom mobile apps out of package two. And you don't need to explain, um, this is a little too wordy, bespoke folio website and album app for your uh, smartphone and tablets allowing you to share blah, blah, blah. I think that this description can go well when you, um, we've got a new mock-up um, file you can use to, to showcase your custom mobile apps as an actual product item in your product list. Don't try to give any one product this much description in the collection section, right? Just one sentence, your own custom mobile app. You can even take out mobile, just your own or your own mobile app or take out the word custom. Um, just simplifying more of this copy here. I think that this could be shortened. You just want to give them an idea. And then I took out all of your other, um, your whole list here of, of all of the choices. So here's another example, like he says choice, choose from either. Like this, it's just showing another, like overwhelming them with too many different choices they need to make, right? So that's fine if you wanna let them choose that, but it's too soon for them to be thinking about this choice. They don't understand what any of these things are until they've talked to you or until they've looked at examples in person, right? So I just summarize that with custom luxury wall art collection. A final thing that you guys should be really striving for when building, um, no quick way to clear all of this. Oh well. Um, when you're when you're working on this, is you want it to be easy for people to scan across if they're all lined up like this, just so they can easily see the differences between each package. And the and the the special things really stand out on the bottom as they as you add more and more things. And another good tactic in our new template is Sometimes I think it works well to put your biggest package actually first. So they see everything and they go, oh, that's a lot. And then they gradually read to the right of the smaller stuff. All right, that's a lot to take in there. Um, okay, so remember collections at the bottom. Now let's, um, to review, let me show you this here. Let's just give you guys a quick, um, this will still work if I go to, Here's the mock-up, just so you guys see the flow one more time of, of the finished product of what I've done. So you've got the hero, we've got this good introduction, and now I go immediately into our most popular printing options. We go six products max. What I was talking about earlier, I think that one of these would be a good, a good place to 
to talk about your online custom mobile app to address that digital need. Like, oh, oh I, I still can get an app. Okay, oh, cool, 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 right? Because um, having them understand all of these different things, like I'm sure the HD acrylic orb is amazing, but it's they probably don't get it until they see it in person. Um, whereas having a mock-up of a custom mobile app, they're gonna be like, oh, cool, I get an app. They get that and it's intriguing and they want to look, read, read more. And then I go directly into your product gallery. Um, um, let's see, they can, you want to give them a little bit of help text and click the gallery below so they can view full screen like this. Um, it's not everybody knows they can tap. And that you've got some great mock-up images here that really show off the quality uh, of, of these great um, products you offer. Um, I tweaked this, just called it a studio tour. Um, and then boom, here is the collections at the bottom. And then end with a shorter call to action, okay? So now let me go back to my slide deck and we'll finish. Um, uh, somebody just asked, where can we get the mockups and place for images? I will, design a glow for products is a good one. Um, but I've got a cool uh, Photoshop template to, um, to create your a mock-up image of a custom app. So uh, Shannon and I will post a video and a link to how to do that as well. All right, so this was the existing, like the, the old version. Um, I, I don't know if I like using the word price. That might just be me. I went through and I changed almost everywhere uh, the, the, the word price to um, starting at, but you've already done amazing here. I've seen other people try to put like sizes and prices in this, just way too much data, does not belong on, on your online guides. Um, so just do something like starting at one number, right? Just to give them an idea of how valuable these are. Um, you've got really good mock-ups, but then um, talking about details like five millimeter crystal clear plexiglass face mounted with the brightest, the highest grade fine art adhesive, diamond polished edges. Like, I think the most exciting thing is this is certified for 100 years. So I grabbed that. That's a really cool feature to focus on. Um, but it's just too much. So that that's the first comment is less is more. And let's, we have got to resist the temptation to show how awesome we are and how much you know, and, and simplify it. It's a nicer way to say dumbing it down. Like we want to explain it in plain English or in a plain language so that they understand what it is um, you're explaining. So here, here's how I've shortened this down. So using a combination of specially selected materials, our HD acrylics are truly unique and designed to bring out the best color rendition and sharpness possible. That's, that's, a, that's good language right there to describe how, how these stand out, right? They're already, you want them to be thinking like, oh, like I don't know, I don't think that when I buy images at Target or Walmart or wherever or Shutterfly, I don't think that they do that, right? Um, it's it bonded using the finest UK made fine art adhesives. Your images are fully UV protected and sealed to last a lifetime. Um, I think that's awesome. I think using the word adhesive, that could maybe even come out. I think the whole idea is that you, there's a, 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 an acrylic cover that's protecting these images forever. I think that's a really awesome thing to, to talk about. And, it, and it's something that most people don't understand is even an, an option or available. Um, let's see if there's any other fun things. Uh, I simplified this saying, I have many different frame moldings and color options to make a truly bespoke product that you will fall in love with. Um, instead of showing them all of the choices of colors, just say that, don't worry, we've got multiple color choices that you can use to, so that they look good in any room or any wall or whatever. All right. Um, and I talked about um, adding this little thing here. So I, I think we should feel free to use this, this line of copy anywhere you want to guys is um, your portraits don't belong in a drawer on a thumb drive. We can be a little bit more direct, lower on the page, like, right? We're just go straight at the issue you're helping solve, right? Is you've got a lot of things to deal and decisions to make. I'm an expert at helping you make those decisions. 
Yes, I'm sure you could figure this out on your own, but collaborating with each of my clients to simplify all of the choices um, to be made is my specialty. You have more important things to do with your time. Click the gallery below to view full screen. Okay. Um, lastly, let's do the about me. Um, Tracy, I think this is a very common style of writing an about me page or a bio. Really great things in here, um, but I want to help shorten it and simplify it a little bit. Um, so I, I took this, you've got like a little bit about you, and then you talk a little bit about your specialty here. Um, you also talk about, I think I can tell that you've used this, this bio um, across all of your genres. It's another thing to look for. We really want um, this to be specific to just this one thing. And we're having these names of towns you service as good for SEO on your website. You don't need, what if somebody doesn't live here? All of a sudden you're telling them that maybe they shouldn't reach out subconsciously, right? So I want to take that out also. Um, all right. So let me show you my version. Hi, I'm Tracy as a crazy mom of two crazy, fun, funny, generic, loving kids and a wife to the most amazing man in the world. I know how fast life can pass us by, which is why it has become my passion to capture, archive and print the most important moments in my clients' lives. Let's chat and create something special for you. Um, I think that there's other times, I know uh, maybe on your website and an about me section, um, you can have the stuff about liking chocolate and all of the things. I think the risk here is some of these just start to sound kind of cliche. I don't wanna be disrespectful. I love chocolate and coffee and all of these things too. Um, but I think let's just get straight to the point here, right? And let the, you wanna let people get to know your personality once they're talking to you. Um, it's, it's tricky to, to showcase some of that stuff in a pricing guide. Um, you can, you, I think other good places for the personality is on your social media and in your groups and stuff like that. All right, if you guys um, want your, your pricing guide reviewed, um, post up them as a link in this post below. Thanks so much for listening. For those of you that, that have listened all the way through to the end here, that's my reward. I'll take a look at them and I wanna review as many as I can. I promise I won't go on quite as long. Um, but that's your bonus for watching this much of the video. Just post a link below if you wanna review. Um, be sure to check out the, I'm gonna show you here. Let me go, I think this is ready. Okay, um, so somebody says, thank you. Already created a mock-up of your app and Designer Glow does not have everything I would need. But I don't price. Is there another place to look? Um, that's a yeah, good question. Um, I would go directly, if you're, um, if you maybe start, start with the vendor of your product, where you're ordering the products, see if they have any resources for displaying mock-ups of the work. Um, I forget what else. Uh, there's other places. If you guys have other places you like to download files with mock-ups, I know Ariana, um, she has a really good shoot and share. I know that Swift Galleries, um, now Printographers, has really good templates for showing cool stuff. I'm kind of blanking, but we can add links to other places to get mock-ups to better show what you sell. Um, awesome. Thanks for the good comments, guys. Let me show you here. Um, I think we've already walked through the finished one. Um, let me show you the actual builder. When you guys do go in, if you have already um, a, an existing guide you've been working on, um, the one, one really important feature that people don't realize is you can move things in order. So I've taken the pricing grid. This used to be way up here. You just, takes a second for it to load. You just click the arrow so I can bump this up or I can bump it back down on the page. And you can move any section on your folio up and down um, the page where you want it to be. And I think that the collection options should definitely be towards the end. So here's, when you guys go to start one from scratch, here's what that template looks like. Right away, you wanna start with a good sentence to embrace that it's hard to hire a photographer or make a choice. I go right into the gallery, um, then go into favorite printing options. Super simple, one paragraph, one or two sentences. Prices, just say starting at. 
no sizes video at simple collections and then boom really focusing on that call to action of scheduling a phone call um, let's see anything else to show inside of the builder um, here we have spots for oh dear no that's products so it looks like we have spots for for six products that's these right here um, I think that six is more than enough. You could be okay with just three and really celebrating and say, look, these are the most popular. These are our favorites or the favorites of our clients. Um, and then let's see on the um, pricing grid, I've hidden one of these. I think that you really do. We've got room for four for those sticklers that would are super stubborn, but I can't stress enough that you really only need three um, package or collection options. Um, and you can just hit the eyeball to hide anything or turn it back on. I think that's everything I want to cover. This was really fun. I hope you guys found this valuable. You're inspired to go um, to build more online pricing guides. I think everybody with a Sticky Folios account should have this template as an option. It is the, the pricing guide template right here. Um, what else? Oh, here in the academy, you can go to available courses. Um, we have the baby step pricing blueprint. This is the course. Um, you click on our role and I walk you through step by step um, what this, this whole process is to build this out in your business. Um, this has been huge. Let's see. People are just posting more good resources. Awesome. Um, so anybody else, remember, if you're watching this, let me know if you want me to do a quick copy um, feedback or, or session like that on your existing um, guide. Get it live. Um, know that something live like this is, is better than having nothing. You can always make it better. You can always come back and edit. And then in the this course, I also walk you through how to make uh, check it out. This, so this is awesome floating welcome video. So that is, uh, I'll show you. there's a way for you to add a floating video to your online pricing guide so that you can introduce yourself, explain what your why. Um, you can talk to them as if you're right there and they're scrolling down the page and you're walking them through sharing your screen of this exact guide super powerful. We'll be posting more examples of how people have this live already. Um, and this is a, a, a really sweet kind of icing on the cake of what you can be building on top of your online pricing guide. Um, all right, that's enough. <laughs> I've had a blast. You guys are awesome. We will see you in the next video. Let me know if there's anything else I can do to help. Um, and uh, post. I look forward to seeing more of you guys' finished links at any time post your finished sticky folios to the group, asking for everybody's creative feedback, not just mine. We can all help each other um, in polishing and celebrating and holding each other accountable. Have an awesome rest of your day. We'll see you soon, guys. Cheers.